you are on to a life transforming experience as Pastor Prince Abba brings you God's word with deep insights and power. God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. There are a couple of you who I'm seeing for the first time this year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Okay. Matthew chapter 25. Quickly. Okay. Somebody said something here. One time we had a program. One of my pastor friends was preaching. He said, when a son comes back home, you know. When a child comes back home, he's coming to ask for school fees. He's coming to ask for Gary. He's coming to ask for rice. When a son comes back home, he's bringing things back. Our son has arrived. Our own has come back. They throw party for you. They celebrate you. You become a relief to the burden of people. That's what sons do. The Bible says that the endless expectation of creation is waiting for the manifestation of sons. What is manifestation? It's not talk. Manifestation is signs and wonders. What is signs and wonders? Signs and wonders are simply the signs people see in your life that makes them wonder. There are different ways to preach the Bible. So if you want to preach your own Bible, if you like, go and buy Dick's Bible. Let it be so big. Put it in your armpit. Wear coat with shoulder pad. No suit. Coat. Then wear tie of many colors. Then wear canvas on the, sh- on the coat. Not shoe. Put canvas. Go and stand on the road. Okay, look at Peace Park now. Do you know how many people gravitate towards Peace Park? Do you know we can cost and peel in Peace Park? I see people sometimes those days when I want to travel, I enter the bus. And one guy just come with his and his he just plays after he sings one or two choruses. Anya Biawo is a Anya Biawo. Don't play the thing, they don't have keyboard. After they finish singing, my brethren in Christ, have you received Jesus in your life? When the guy opens the mouth, what comes out? I'll be first. It's part of the reason why he left the boss life. Because the kind of things you see there, you don't like it. So I shift a little. I say, if this is what Christianity is, I don't want to be. If this is what Christianity is all about, I don't want to be this kind of a person. I will shift. When he finishes, he collects offering. 10, 20, 20 naira. He receives offering. So whatever you have to support the ministry, hey, come on. The church is meant to support the world. The world is not the one to support us. We are here to support the world. We are here to help the world. The world was never meant to help the church. The Bible said the government shall be on his shoulders. What are you saying? We are changing the tides. We are changing the system. We are changing the status quo. Enough of that error. So, the guy finishes and they give him 20, 20 naira. Let hunger not kill you. That's the impression. He goes away for another bus. Okay, imagine that we carry kingdom wealth. Do you know that there's no consumption that depletes God's provision? We have consumed and consumed from the day of creation. We have kept consuming everything God made. Yet, we have not been able to deplete his provisions. They are still cows. We have been eating cows from the creation of the first man. We have not been able to finish cows. I went to Timber the other day. I saw a lot of plants. I said, these plants are trees. Oh. Do you know how many houses have been built with woods? How many chairs have been built with woods? How many whatever, cabinets, shelves, call it whatever, drums that have been built with wood? We still have woods. Just drive on your way from Wakiliki now to Enugu. Just be looking at the trees. We still have woods. They have been soaring and soaring. Yet we can't deplete it. What kind of successful man is that? We have been using up sand to build, build sand, water, sharp stones, stones, concrete, whatever you call it, limestone, cement. Yet there has not been a scarcity of it. There 
that's the man who made me in his image and likeness. And you see, I should live in the image of Satan. Poverty is not humility. It's not. So imagine we drive to that peace mass area. We didn't print flyers. We didn't print stickers. We just carried Range Rovers and carried Homer Jeeps. Then, on top of some of the Homer Jeeps, we put some of our sound system. We just use one and mount drums only. One Homer Jeep, put drums, arrange it. And there's a driver dressed in pristine, you know, suit. Then he has pilots on the, you know, pilots one. Drums. Then you have another Homer, just keyboard on top. Then there's another Helux. Only one guy inside, bass guitarist, with his speakers. Then the place where our system is set, I don't know how to describe it. You set a mobile. Then there's another big truck with a standby mechanogen. We just reach there and block the whole road. Cause hold up. We didn't take permission from FRS, from government. We just blocked the whole road. Then there's another long van where the choir people just stand and they are ministering. After a while, another convoy comes and his team of pastors. And pastor is on the stage preaching and asking people to give their life to Christ. It's not, you won't sweat. It's just brethren. I don't know if you like the life you see here. <laughs> I said, it's, it's possible. You too can have it. Just accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. He gives all these things. I don't know if you like it. The people who are traveling with it come from their bus. Driver will be, let's go now. You, you're a fool. He, he keep driving this bus. I need this Jesus. They will stand there. Okay, if you like, let some back belly people go and phone police headquarters and commissioner. Who are they? Blocking the road. Did they take permission? As the police commissioner and his team are just coming, brrr, and they are saying, arrest them, arrest them. He will just tell you guys are wicked. You guys are demons. How can you call us to arrest these people? It's you guys who need to be arrested. Because when you produce results, you cancel insults. And when you cancel insults, men consult you. Become a consultant. We are getting there. Found out poverty does not improve your standard of living. Does it make it makes you think awkward? It's a way it makes you think. Instead of thinking forward, you're thinking backward. It makes you suspect everybody. Even when your own child is coming to greet you, you think he's coming for school fees. It makes you suspect everybody. It's not a life to live. Wife wakes up in the morning and she smiles at you. You suspect the smile. It's like she wants money for her. And she's just, <laughs> what is going on? That's not a life. It's the way it conditions you. Do you know poverty makes your subconscious mind constantly negative? Have you seen a man who you're talking to? You're passing information that can help him become somebody in life. Yet, his mind is so programmed to his background. You can't help him. Okay, a man you are talking, people are laughing, but he is burning. It's not because that's how God made him. That's how poverty has made him. In his image and likeness. So as you are communicating, his, in my, his mind has traveled to his village. He is not there with you. She's not there with you. There's something about the countenance of the wealthy. There's something about the countenance of people who have hope that there may be no money in your pocket now, but there's this, there's this glorious hope you have. You may be in school now; and it looks like it's still rough, but you have hope. Ah, if if Mike Adenuga can employ labor, if he can, what is he? Does he have two heads? This same Jesus. He's look. God is not rationing his wealth. God does not ration his resources. He's 
is no man. Men can do budgets, ration wealth, ration. Um, okay, um, okay. Imagine God waking up one morning, and He says, uh, "Nigeria, listen. You know, we have been running shortage of air. There's no oxygen. You know how much you pay for oxygen? Just the oxygen in the hospital here. Yeah. Do you know how much you, you you have to pay if you are on oxygen now, just to get artificial air, not real artificial air? You know how much you pay for one day." I had a story of one they put on the oxygen. The thing was consuming money. Family business was going down. The father came and told the doctor, who put the oxygen on the son? He said, remove the oxygen. Let the guy die. This thing has drained our family. He just removed the cap from his whatever. The guy gave up. Imagine God waking up one morning and say, Nigeria, okay, Ebony States, please, um, we want to a uh, heavily announcement. Listen carefully. We won't repeat this broadcast. We found out that the world's population is rising. At the last time we checked with this census, you guys have 7.2 billion people here on earth. Then look at heaven alone now. Okay, heaven has about 3 point something trillion angels. I don't know how we can accommodate this thing again. We are depleting air. We are running short of oxygen. So we are going to be rationing the thing now. So today we are going to give China. China needs this thing more. We've <laughs> China is your thought. China is going to take oxygen for just two months. So Nigeria, wait for two months. You wait two days, you will die. Two days is enough to send you packing. You see, there's heat now. You see the way you're feeling. So two months, we will revisit you guys. We need to, you know, with the vast population on earth, and even that in heaven, God has never complained for one day. He's running short of air. I'm trying to give you a picture of the God you serve. I like that song. What a mighty God we serve. Not what a mighty God we serve. I don't, oh my God. I serve a living, not a dead one. Change your mind this morning. Change your perception about you. Okay, give me Matthew. God does not supply you with grace because you want it. He supplies you with grace because you are ready to take. You are ready to take steps. You are ready for the race. That's the way it works. God does not equip you to get you ready. He equips you because you are ready. God does not give you grace to get you ready. He releases grace because you are ready. So now, this year of overflowing grace... You're going to be having outstanding success. But now you need to understand that <laughs> grace can't function without principles. Okay, before I get here, give me John chapter 1, verse 17. Okay, for the law was given by Moses, but grace and what? Grace and truth came by Jesus. So you see, it didn't just come with grace. Grace is God's riches at Christ's expense. Grace is unmerited favor. It's something you didn't do anything to merit. But Jesus did not just come with grace. Grace is like one side of the coin. There's another side of the equation called truth. What is truth? Principles. Principles, values. Jesus came with grace and truth because grace cannot function without truth. Okay, just like rain is wasted without buckets, that is how grace can be wasted without truth. somebody follow what i'm saying just like water you can't waste water when there's nothing to collect it you can't waste rain when there's nothing to collect it so you can't waste grace do you know okay the day we declare this year a year of overflowing grace the heavens opened as i invoked it the heavens opened god honored everything i said here grace was released but grace can be wasting when there's no when there's no truth
so this morning i'm going to be showing you one side of truth you need to know because you see okay now watch this god made us in his image and likeness the image of god talks about the nature of god talks about the character of god the values god upholds but there's a one called the likeness of god the likeness of god is how god functions now there's another scripture that gives voice to this scripture i think that's is this second Corinthians chapter three where the bible talked about jesus being the power and the wisdom of god if you want to see power flow you need grace if you want to seek for instance people are sick now and i want to heal them of sickness what do i do to heal them grace okay do you know salvation is by grace healing is by grace ministry offices are offices of grace ministry gifts spiritual gifts are gifts of grace because these are gifts jesus gave you you don't need to do anything to merit it okay when a man is sick he comes to church and i pray and he's healed what did he do to get healed how much did he pay to get healed if he goes to the hospital to be cured of cancer he will pay millions he comes to the church and i just pray open the heavens and healing flows what did he do did he pay any consultancy fee to receive it no he didn't the blood of jesus has already been paid the consultancy fee as a treatment fee so on one side of life of christianity you find great price supply but now how do you get the supply how do you keep the supply how do you make grace function is by getting truth now you are aware god is the highest and greatest management expert in the world everything he made by grace he has retained by truth Do you know you cannot retain salvation by grace salvation is consolidated on the premise of truth bible says, walk out your salvation with what fear and trembling the way to consolidate a believer when he has received christ is not by grace again paul says shall we continue in sin that grace may abound he said god forbid grace is not a license to sin grace is a cure for sin grace only came to help people who could not help themselves people who were sinners people who were laden with sin and all that grace became the cure okay it's just like maybe a vaccine has been found for hiv now that vaccine for hiv is not to license people who don't have it to go and get it the sin for hiv is for people who already have it so grace takes care of the sin problem grace takes care of the poverty problem but how will the poverty not come back not by grace now but by truth a man gets healed of diabetes supernaturally by grace he cannot retain health by grace he needs truth to retain that miracle now every miracle cannot be sustained by a miracle every miracle can be sustained by a principle that's the way it works you can't sustain a miracle by a miracle you sustain miracles by principles so what did you do that produced diabetes too much of sugar too much of whatever and the man just lays his hand on you and gets you healed the moment you get healed and you go back to die to sugar and all that the diabetes will come and this time you may die it will come back truth are laws truth are principles you can't do anything to change them you can't do anything to improve it you can't alter them you can't even break them any attempt at breaking a law breaks you any attempt at breaking a principle would fight you principles have the power actually to break you. you don't have the power to break them so now there are people this year who are trusting god for a lot of things they pray the grace comes 
they fast, the grace comes, they sow seed. Okay, now we are in the season of first fruit. Next Sunday or within the week on Wednesday or so, I would show you about the first fruit principle. They sow their seeds, they give their tithe, their offerings. But most of them won't do nothing. They just go back and fold their hands. No, it doesn't work that way. When you obey the giving laws, for instance, maybe the law of tithing, the law of first fruit, the law of you know, offerings, meal offering, all of those stuff. When you obey them, when you pray, you unlock the heavens. Grace is released. Okay, it's just like if I pay my tithe, now the Bible says he will open the window of heaven and pour out a blessing that there will be not a room to contain it. Now, what is that blessing? I told you one time in church that the blessing is first an intangible resource. The blessing is not a tangible resource. Tangible resources are only products of the blessing. That a man has a jeep, has a car, has a house, doesn't mean he's a blessed man. Those are all products of the blessing. A blessed man is a man who has intangible components. For instance, for instance, you see what is producing this sound? It's not what you are seeing. There's an intangible thing you don't see. It can be very small. If I go and remove it inside the speaker, that speaker can still be standing there. It doesn't mean the speaker is active. The thing that produces a sound, okay now, okay, okay now, I want you to connect the very thing that produces, look at me talking here. I have a microphone in my hand. There's a speaker standing there. Please, what wire connects that microphone now? The microphone and the speaker. Can you see it? So what is that in this charging sound from this mic? Look at the distance where the speaker is. Look at where I am. What is the thing connecting sound? It's intangible. You can't see it. That's how the blessing is. You don't see it most of the times. So now, I pay my tithe. God wants to bless me. What, how does he bless me? He releases wisdom. He releases a breakthrough idea. Maybe it just drops in my mind. Hey, a business idea. Something you need to do to create wealth. Okay, maybe he just drops in my mind a new way of building relationship. Maybe I just stumble into a person. I just paid my time. And God just networked somebody divinely. Okay, maybe it can be the governor. Maybe it can be a senator. I just walk in somewhere carelessly and my, you know, feet was divinely ordered and I met the senator. On meeting him, what I do at that point with the mind the efficacy of grace. Now, you didn't do nothing to network that guy. You didn't call him. You just met coincidentally. But of course, maybe one seed you sowed brought him your way. And that was your time, your opportunity for breakthrough. If you don't know truth now on how to build relationships, you don't know truth on communication skills, you don't know truth on how to service relationship. Okay, maybe somebody just dashed your money. Maybe they said it on just meeting, he gave you maybe... 50,000 and you just carry it, thank you sir and walked away and there was no scene of that relationship you don't have the wisdom on how to hey I need to appreciate it's 50,000 it's not big maybe a little text message can I find my way to his office or his house maybe a little bottle of wine like when I talk to students sometimes I tell them you don't have any reason to fail a course if you have wisdom the lecturer is hard the lecturer is hard no the lecturer is not hard you are the one who is hard because if I pay my tithe as a student, God releases wisdom on how to function with my lecturers. Then I come out with the first class and people are wondering, how come? Is the seed that I sow? Yes, it's a seed. But those seeds poured out a blessing. Now, others can be failing the course. What do I do? I come back at the beginning of the semester. I go to that lecturer's office with a bottle of wine. Ah, sir, I came to appreciate you for last semester. Do you know you are the best lecturer in this office, in this school? The way you taught me, I have tried to understand this cause, but I couldn't. But you know, anytime he may be the most wicked man, but use the law of attraction. He be the most wicked man, and everybody knows he's a no-go way area. But check, found that even Satan cannot resist good. The most wicked man can't resist good. He can't love us. It's a strong force. You just bring love, come to the man. Sir, you just bring that thing. People don't see in him. He knows everybody thinks I'm wicked. But you're the one now who is telling him, sincerely, you, how you appreciate him. Then he asks you, what did I score you last semester? He said, I actually got a C, but I am grateful. I didn't even expect it. I am grateful, sir. Hey, that man would mark your rage number. 
he would make sure he doesn't give you even a B. He would do everything possible to compensate for giving you a C. Maybe you merited the A and he gave you a C. You will never make that C again. He will keep giving you B. Not because you wrote and passed, but because you have employed a principle. So you see how wisdom functions now. So you are praying to God for breakthrough. An idea comes. Maybe on something you need to do and you ignore it. The breakthrough is with help. But was the grace with really? Yes, it was. Grace is an intangible resource. You see a man who is flowing in favor. He is easily likable. People like him. Now, if there's one thing I have found out in this church, if there's nothing else I know, is that I'm very sure my members love me to a point they can die for me. How did it happen? I can rebuke you. I can spank you. I found that they love me, that they can give their life for me. How? How? I first took interest in them. It is not my good preaching alone now. I show you commitment, show you love. Then now, what am I attracting from you? Favor. The same thing applies outside. Favor. For instance, somebody gives me an expensive gift. How can I appreciate this person for this gift he has given to me now? Okay, perhaps I can't buy him another car to tell him thank you for giving me a car. What do I do? I just send him a one five recharge card. Even as a pastor. And he knows he can afford 10 million recharge card. Why are you giving me one five? Well, you see, as little as it is, the thing opens the heart again. Like, what kind of pastor is that? He should have just, you know, ah, there's something about him. You see, I keep feeling. For the continuation of this message, please play the next track. <laughs>